EWTN's Cathedrals Across America presents From College Station, Texas The Dedication of St. Mary's Catholic Center Church With the Most Reverend Joe S. Vasquez Bishop of Austin as celebrant and homilist Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem is built as a city, bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as it is decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. There were set the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. For the peace of Jerusalem pray, may they prosper those who love you. May peace abide in your walls, and in security be in your towers. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. For the sake of my family and friends, let me say peace upon you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek good things for you. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the
its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, and on the rivers he made it first.
It is through the sacraments that we experience this divine life. In this church, people will gather to celebrate the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, reconciliation, matrimony, and anointing of us. These sacraments make us holy because Christ is truly present in these celebrations. It is in and through the sacraments that we find the source of life and holiness. In the second reading from the letter of St. Peter, we hear these words, Behold, I am laying a cornerstone. You are laying a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of the church and the temple that is going to be built by the living church of the community of believers. Brothers and sisters, each one of us is a living stone. As St. Peter reminds us, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, we have God's word and presence, and from him, the church receives her life, her teaching, and her mission. The deepest reality of the church is to be a sign and an instrument of Christ in the world. The church's desire is to be faithful to Christ in all that she does. The altar, which is so beautiful and precious, is the central focus of this church. The altar represents Christ. In a few moments, this altar will be consecrated to the pouring of sacred chrism and invoking of God's blessing. We should remember that the word Christ is a title given to Jesus because he is the anointed one. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit and sent to save the world. As the church proclaims, Jesus is the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. On this altar, we celebrate the Eucharist, which is the perpetual memorial of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical Ecclesia de Eucharistia, said, when the church celebrates the Eucharist, the memorial of her Lord's death and resurrection, this central event of salvation becomes really present and the work of our redemption is carried out. The sacrifice of Christ and the sacrifice of the Eucharist are one single sacrifice. The fourth century father, church father, St. John Chrysostom expressed this beautifully. We always offer the same lamb, not one today and another tomorrow, but always the same one. For this reason, the sacrifice is always only one. Even now we offer that victim who was once offered and will never be consumed. In a moment, I will place beneath the altar a relic of San Jose Sanchez del Rio, a martyr who died for the faith at the age of 14. During the persecution of the church in Mexico, he defended his Catholic faith. Eventually, when he was captured, he was threatened and tortured to abandon the Catholic faith. But he persevered and remained faithful to Cristo Rey, in Our Lady of Guadalupe. I pray that this great saint will be a source of inspiration to young people, and especially our university students. Like Jose Sanchez de Rio, many of you have discovered the great gift of your Catholic faith here at St. Mary's. May you continue to grow in that faith. In today's gospel, St. Peter declares you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And now Jesus makes a promise to Peter. You are Peter, 
and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Christ entrusts his church to Peter, our first pope. Christ's promise to Peter has never wavered. For over 2,000 years, here we are. We stand firm on that promise made to Peter long ago. The church Christ established on the confession of Peter is the same church to which you and I belong. It's not a different church. It's the same church. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI explained the mystery of the church in these words, which I think are most appropriate. The church is not a community of the perfect, but a community of sinners, obliged to recognize their need for God's love, their need to be purified through the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying concerning the authority of Peter, and the apostle make it clear that God's power is love, the love that shines forth from Calvary. Hence, we can also understand why, in the gospel account, Peter's confession of faith is immediately followed by the first prediction of the Passion. Through his death, Jesus conquered the powers of the underworld with his blood he poured out over the world and the immense flood of mercy which cleanses the whole of humanity in its healing waters. Let me conclude by asking God's blessing from the Mother of God to whom this church honors. Indeed, this is a beautiful place. Mary, the Mother of God, said yes many times in her life, not only at the Annunciation, but throughout her life she said yes to the Lord over and over again. A significant moment of Mary's yes is at the foot of the cross when she stood lovingly united in the passion of her son. And from the cross Jesus spoke these words, Woman, there is your son. And in turn he said to the disciple, There is your mother. At the hour of the cross, Mary was once again asked to give her yes. It is on the cross that Jesus entrusts Mary to the beloved Apostle John, and the beloved Apostle receives Mary as his mother. In doing so, Jesus extended Mary's maternity to all the members of the church. She is our mother. She loves us, each one of us. We are her children. From that moment on, we have all been to gather together under the mantle of Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, our Mother, teach us to believe, to hope, to love with you. Show us the way to your Son's kingdom. Shine upon us and guide us on our way.
Let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, who makes the hearts of the faithful into spiritual temples for himself, and may the supplication of the saints, our brothers and sisters, be joined with our voices.
Mercifully accept our petitions, we pray, O Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, so that this building to be dedicated to your name may be a house of salvation and grace, where the Christian people gathering as one will worship you in spirit and in truth and be built up in charity through Christ our Lord. to celebrate your name in joyful proclamation. For today your faithful people desire to dedicate to you solemnly and for all time this house of prayer, where they worship you devoutly, are, introduced, are instructed by the word, and are nourished by the sacraments. This house brings to light the mystery of the church, which Christ made holy by the shedding of his blood, so that he might present her to himself as a glorious bride, a virgin resplendent with the integrity of faith, a mother made fruitful by the power of the Spirit. Holy is the Church, the chosen vine of the Lord, whose branches fill the whole world, and whose tendrils, born on the wood of the cross, 
reach upward to the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the church, God's dwelling place with the human race, a holy temple built of living stones, standing upon the foundation of the apostles, with Christ Jesus, its chief cornerstone. Exalted is the church, a city set high on a mountain for all to see, resplendent to every eye with the unfading light of the Lamb, and resounding with the sweet hymn of the saints. Therefore, O Lord, we beseech you, graciously pour forth from heaven your sanctifying power upon this church and upon this altar to make this forever a holy place with a table always prepared for the sacrifice of Christ. Here may the flood of divine grace overwhelm human offenses so that your children, Father, being dead to sin, may be reborn to heavenly life. Here may your faithful gathered around the table of the altar celebrate the memorial of the Paschal mystery and be refreshed by the banquet of Christ's word and his body. Here may the joyful offering of praise resound with human voice joined to the song of angels. An unceasing prayer rise up to you for the salvation of the world. Here may the poor find mercy, the oppressed attain true freedom, and all people be clothed with the dignity of your children until they come exultant to the Jerusalem, which is above. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Rise, O Lord, like incense in your sight. And as this house is filled with a pleasing fragrance, so let your church be fragrant with the aroma of Christ.
Let the light of Christ shine brightly in the church, that all nations may attain the fullness of truth.
pray, brothers and sisters. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty, ever-living God, may the gifts of your joyful church be acceptable to you, O Lord, so that your people gathered in this holy house may come through these mysteries to everlasting salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Consecrate to you have places for the divine mysteries. And so we dedicate joyfully to your majesty this house of prayer built by human labor. Here is foreshadowed the mystery of the true temple. Here is prefigured the heavenly Jerusalem. For you made the body of your Son, born of the tender virgin, the temple consecrated to you, in which the fullness of the Godhead might dwell. You also established the church as a holy city, built upon the foundation of the apostles, with Christ Jesus, himself the chief cornerstone. A city to be built of chosen stones, given life by the Spirit and bonded by charity. Wherefore, in less ages, you will be all in all, and the light of 
Christ will shine undimmed forever. Through him, O Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks as in exaltation we are claimed. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, this holy, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who hold thee to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and of these, your servants, who in a spirit of faith have offered to you this church in honor of St. Mary and built it with tireless labor. Be pleased, O Lord, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, O Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Savior's command and for my divine teaching we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Through these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, we pray. Instill in our minds an increase of your truth, so that we may constantly adore you in your holy temple and glory in your sight with all the saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today has truly been a wonderful day for St. Mary's Catholic Center and certainly for the Diocese of Austin. There are so many people who have made today possible. And as I offer these words of gratitude on behalf of Bishop Vasquez, please hold your applause so that we can thank everyone at the same time. Your Eminence, Cardinal Donaro, once again, thank you so much for your presence here today. Bishops, we are grateful that you have traveled from all across Texas and across the border in Oklahoma. Your presence today is truly a testament to how important this place is across Texas and into Oklahoma. We're grateful to our priests. Fathers, thank you so much for being here today. I know that for many of you, this is a very important place. This is the place where God placed into your hearts a deep desire to serve him as priests. So to our priests and deacons, religious men and women, thank you so much for your presence today. On behalf of Bishop Vasquez as well, we want to thank our liturgical ministers and others who have served to make today's Mass so beautiful, our Masters of Ceremonies. Father Lehman Fallon, thank you so much, Father Lehman. Father Paul Michael Piega, Father Michael O'Connor, Father Sam Bass, and Mr. David Ojeda. To our, to our altar servers and sacristans, thank you for your service as well. We're grateful to our electors, our hospitality ministers, and the many parish volunteers who have helped to make today's liturgy so smooth and so beautiful. We offer a word of gratitude to Patrick Baker, who is our Director of Planning and Construction. Patrick has walked with the construction team here at St. Mary's throughout this project. I know Bishop Vasquez is very grateful to Patrick. We're also grateful to Scott Whitaker and the Diocesan Stewardship and Development Team, who worked with Frank Shannon and his whole team on the capital campaign to make this possible. We're grateful for the presence of our Chief Financial Officer today, Mary Beth Koenig, who's with us. Mary Beth worked tirelessly with the team here to make sure that they had the resources to make this project possible. Mary Beth, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness. We're also grateful to Becca Spellacy, our Director of the Office of Worship, who has worked with her team and the team here throughout this process to make this liturgy so well planned out and so beautiful. Becca, thank you for your hard work. We also welcome and thank our Diocesan Office of Communications who are with us today to tell this wonderful story, not only here in College Station, but beyond to the whole diocese and across the internet. And finally, we are very grateful for the choir. What a beautiful and sincere sound that you have made for our liturgy today. Thank you so much for your effort in helping us to worship God worthily. And so for all of these people, let's offer a sincere Father James said we can hold your applause to the end. 
Whoops, no, you count as applause. <laughs> We now have a scene for the 12th man. It's awesome to be in this space. It says, are I sitting here at the beginning? I guess I shouldn't have touched the mic there. <laughs> so by sitting at the beginning, I was looking around the church, and it was amazing to me just to recognize all the different memories of building this church. So definitely starting with the groundbreaking to laying at the foundation, being out here at three, four, or five in the morning watching the cement being poured to the beams going up, uh, to the church taking shape, stained glass putting, being put in, the pews, everything coming together. And it, it also struck me too was how awesome it is for all the memories that will be taking place in this space. So weddings, ordinations, baptisms, sacrament of reconciliation, the holy sacrifice of the mass, confirmations, just so many people who will come and encounter the Lord here. And how awesome that is beginning today. So we've been planning for this church for a long time, and it's great that we are here today. As I was assigned here, of course I knew there was a building project coming, and I was told, well, Father Willem, you're the new pastor of St. Mary's, and uh, you need to build a church. <laughs> uh, how do you do that? <laughs> Trust in the Holy Spirit, right? And he will guide you. So it's been a beautiful gift, and again, as we all know, and one of my favorite words to use is relationship. So our God is a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's been amazing, all the relationships that have been formed and deepened, whether it was through our fundraising efforts, whether it was uh, through the building committee and building planning, steering committees, whether it was uh, through our ambassadors, um, through everything, all the different relationships that have formed and deepened, and we have prayed for this church, prepared for this church, prayed for this ministry, um, definitely as we have seen and encountered Christ in one another, that uh, it just doesn't take one person to build a church, but it takes a whole community. How awesome it is to have this church here in College Station. It's been said from time to time that uh, Aggies sometimes go over the top a little bit. <laughs> but we definitely are spirit-filled. And here at St. Mary's, definitely filled with the Holy Spirit. And so as we were building this church, I think this church coming into it is, is perfect um, for our ministry here at St. Mary's. You know, it was always kind of interesting in the building committee meetings, we would be talking, of course, uh, us up who are Aggies were like, uh, there's not enough room in here. So uh, I need some more room. Put some room here, put some room over there. How about this room? And uh, going back and forth and whatnot. And so I think it's a, a great balance, of course. You might have noticed, of course, as you were coming in, and we didn't go that far, but, you know, there's, on the side of the pews, there's the A and the M, and even at the top of the dome, A and M, you're like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> but as you all know, or as we know, A and M stands for Auspice Maria, which in Latin means under the care of the Blessed Mother who sits on the top of that dome, right under that image, and who cares for and loves all her children, and desires nothing more, as my Bishop Mike said yesterday, but for her children to encounter her son, Jesus Christ. And that's what's gonna happen in this place, encounter with the Lord. So from the beginning, Aggie Catholics have sought out their faith, from cadets walking six miles to St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Bryan for Mass on Sunday, and six miles back to the Quad to now over 4,000 Texas a and and Blend students come to Mass every Sunday. God has blessed St. Mary's as fertile soil for the formation of apostles, for the church, and the world. St. Mary's has been blessed with faithful and spirit-filled leaders, just as we heard last night from Monsignor Gleishman and his beloved Agnes, to Monsignor Charlie Elmer, Monsignor Elmer Holman, Father Leon Strider, who is here with us, Bishop Mike Sis, Bishop David Condor, Father Brian McMaster, and all the others. If truly, personally to me, and I know to many of you have been spiritual fathers, uh, pointed to Christ in their life. The Holy Spirit has used their gifts to bring students closer to Christ and to help us to see that our relationship with God is not just a part of our life, but it is our life. We need Christ no matter what vocation or career, career God is preparing us for. 
And as an associate pastor, I remember Bishop David saying one Sunday morning at a Sunday Mass, one day soon, Texas A&M University will be known as that small university next to St. Mary's. <laughs> And it is truly happening. <laughs> As Bishop Vasquez mentioned, it is humbly the number of vocations, priests and consular have created line that have come here from St. Mary's. As a freshman coming here in fall of 1996, definitely had been discerning and thinking about a priesthood and thinking about a priesthood. And maybe not a lot of my friends thought that that was really a, a cool thing to do. But I remember coming here, finding that it wasn't cool if you weren't thinking about vocation. <laughs> And definitely very welcome, definitely with Bishop Mike and Bishop David, um, as a beautiful shepherds continue for prayer and discernment. So a true testament that God is still calling young men and women to the priesthood and consecrated life to go out to all nations and share the good news. As a student, I remember Bishop Mike's vision was to have an anti in every diocese and religious order in the world. And we're on our way. So when I was a student in 1996-2002, my favorite a and t-shirt that I wore, I think wore all the time, but one favorite t-shirt that I liked was, had a quote on the back of it by General Patton, who said, give me an army of West Point graduates, and I'll win a battle. Give me a handful of Texas Aggies, and I'll win a war. It's been very humbling for me to see what God has done with a handful of Aggie Catholics. So I'd like to thank everyone who has helped us realize the need for a new Catholic, for a new church to set a plan to build it and to complete that plan. I'd like to thank all of our current and former students who continue to seek out Christ and to grow in their faith. We would not need this new church without all of them. We'd like to thank all of our staff who have supported Bishop David, Father Brian, and myself in making this new church a reality. We could not have done it without each of you. I'd like to thank all of our donors, former students, parishioners, and parents of students who recognize the movement of the Holy Spirit here at St. Mary's and graciously given to this new church and our ministry program to form apostles for the church and the world. But also like to thank, again, Bishop Joe Vasquez. I'd like to thank you and the diocese and staff who helped us to bring this church to completion. So especially thank you for your trust in me and for your vision for this new church. would also especially like to thank BRW Architects, especially for Danny Pesek. I'd also like to thank Studio I.O. and Michael Ray. I'd specifically like to thank the Stuart Builders and the Stuart family, Don and Craig and Mark, Brad and Tim, your spouses, your children, family and friends. Thank you very much. I'd like to also thank all of our construction workers, artists, subs and everyone who helped us to go from ideas to a plan to a beautiful church of beauty encounter and tradition that will lead many people to an encounter with christ and finally we'd like to thank our dedication team who has helped us who has helped us make this weekend a very special and memorable event we could not have done it without each of you so especially for lizette hawkins for jessica Koneman, for Rachel Kadena, Father Chris, for Travis Conant, for Josh Applegate, our community and communications team, for David Oketa, and all of you. I expected that should be a little bit louder than that. Good luck to you. And, as, and finally, as, uh, just to reiterate what Father James said, for thanks to Mike Misicek, to Becca Gearhart. <laughs> So finally, I would like to thank all the families across the state and country who send their children here to St. Mary's. We now have a seat for them for the next 100 years. <laughs> so this building is now a church dedicated to service of 
forming apostles for the church and the world. Desire to give this church to the Holy Spirit and the Blessed Mother and to see what they will do. Our vision for this church is radical hospitality to all who enter and to help students place Christ at the center of their life. So thank you again for your presence here today. There will be a reception meeting following in the tent right outside as you exit the front doors of the church to your right, as well as at the John Paul II event center uh, back in the student center. So both places will have the same food. Um, you can gather either one and all of you are welcome. We have a virtual tour of the church on our website. So if you'd like to come back here into the church, you're more than welcome to check that out. We also have uh, dedication or uh, tour guide booklets that are in the back of the church on the left and the right. You're more than welcome to use those, and then we ask you to place them back for someone else to use as well. Go to our landing page, the dedication landing page on our website, and you'll find the tour. Remember the Blessed Sacrament is now here in the tabernacle in this church. So as you walk around and tour the church, um, make sure that you remember the Blessed Sacrament is here. There are no Mass confessions this evening, so check out the new weekend Mass schedule for Mass times tomorrow on our website. God bless and good evening. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today for the dedication of this church, make you abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. 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 Will that all his scattered children be gathered in his son, grant that you become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Come down on 